Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of your faithful trip. It started in the firmament, and then we all got tricked. Life was great when we were young, with all the things we believed. Then it all got hard, unbearable, and we know we're being deceived. Forgotten, ignored, secret, and hidden. Topics that talk about how. Water is knowledge. Now drink from the fountain. Let's pour some on you now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Plain Mundane Show. Today we're going to talk about God's personal flying vehicle, as it was seen by Ezekiel in the Bible, in the book of Ezekiel, which gives a very good description. If you've ever read this, or if you've heard about this, reading yourself in the Bible in Ezekiel, or in a Sunday school class, maybe you've heard a Sunday school teacher talk about it in a class, ask questions. But I remember from what all I remember, I didn't understand what it was. I've heard people give talks in congregation about it. Um, I've heard Sunday school class. I just know there were a bunch of rings and gears and gears within gears. And including myself, all of the people discussing it in church, nobody knew what it was. And it just was kind of a, hmm, just to us, it looked like the inside of a clock or a watch with all the little sprockets and the fine gears of a, a, a fine Swiss made watch or something. Somebody knows how to make that, but it made no sense to us, the description. But now, what happens is if you study free energy in a two toroid system with transverse fields over unity, and even a flux capacitor, yes, the term flux capacitor is a real term in physics, okay? And it pertains to this. I'm getting ahead of myself, but what I'm telling you is that God's personal flying vehicle in the book of Ezekiel makes total sense to me now. Not, I can't say total. It makes 97% sense to me because I don't know how to do all of it. But, man, does it make sense. Do you remember in the movie Contact, the vehicle that they made, the, the big huge structure with the, the rings that would spin inside of each other, that, and they dropped Jodie Foster's character into the into the middle of that machine while it was spinning and that's where she disappeared into a void well that movie was actually true in that concept maybe it wasn't perfect but the concept is actually true and let me show you let's start with this picture look at this picture i've got on the screen right now uh that's ezekiel in the red robe let me switch my cursor that's ezekiel in the red robe there this must be God or a God. These must be God's Elohim. If you describe uh, plural gods, uh, words ending with I am are plural, like cherubim, Elohim. So here shows several coming down. But look at the shape of their craft. It's got two transverse opposed rings. Rings make toroids. Toroids are magnetic fields. If you've ever heard my description of the flat plane world, it has to be a sagittal section in the middle of a toroid. In other words, if you took a donut shape electromagnetic current going across a plane, which would be the center cut, like if you were to cut a bagel to put it in the toaster. This is just theory. I'm showing you. We'll get to the vehicle. If you were to take the shape of a bagel or a donut, that's called in science a torus, T-O-R-U-S. If you take a torus shape, which is also a toroid, but a toroid does not have to be a torus. A toroid does not have to be perfectly round around the circumference. It can have different points. And you could call those pillars in their cathode. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but this just gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and I love it. So if you have your toroid field and you have your plane across the middle, if you took, like, let's say, you know, chain, look at a chain link in a regular chain goes my landscaper you hear that uh, if you have a link of chain this way and transverse in 90 degrees you put another link going the other way think of a chain like that except it's not offset the centers aren't offset they're in line so that you could spin it like a CV joint in a car like a constant velocity joint think of that uh, but this doesn't move these are created by magnets there may be some spinning around the circumference in a linear plane, but there are two planes. This is hyperplane geometry with two dimensions to it. It's a two toroid 
free energy field. And if God came down in a craft, it would have been exactly what he needed in a personal craft to have free energy. And that's how you create the Taurus around the ship. If you've ever seen any uh, UFO pictures or the government ships that we don't have, of like the TR-3B, when that reactor lights up in the middle, it creates a white ball of light around the craft. And what that is, you're actually looking at the Taurus expanding until it envelops the craft in another frequency that's at a much higher power at a different frequency. So it can, from that point, move to any time and space. And you've heard the physicists and people explain it and how uh, they say time is an illusion. And when you actually, if you block gravity, then you can actually block time and space or you can bend time and space if you can bend gravity. It's all related. And so let's look into this. Let me show you some other pictures. I've got some stock toroid photos. If you look here, these are toroids. Now, what you're looking at are copper wires wound around, usually ceramics. <clears throat> and I sold these because uh, in the business industry, these were good for alarms on fans. You could run your, you could run a 220 volt cord right through the center of that going to a fan, let's say on a chicken hatchery on an incubator. And if you needed that fan to keep the chickens alive or the embryos alive, if you run the cord through the center of that and then the ends of this coil, you connect to the low side of a circuit board. Uh, let's see if it's on here. Right here. That's what I sold for incubator alarm systems for fans going off. And so I, I actually sold toroids before I actually really knew what they did. And I had to have one of the uh, electrical engineers explain it to me. See this yellow shape of this convoluted? That's interesting. To me, that's like a three-dimensional path of a toroidal field going through dimensional space. In a, like a roller coaster in a convoluted fashion. Now let's keep going down. I want to show you. Here's a good drawing of the inside of a toroid. Now, see this pinkish orange, right? Did you see my cursor? See how the column is going up here? Let's say right in the middle of this, if you drew a plane going across on, this looks like the inside of a flying saucer or some, or a, or a donut or a torus. And that, that's why in the drawings, the reactor core is in the center. If you drew a horizontal plane going across that core, and you expanded this up to be this, the model of the Earth. The Earth's plane would be right across the center of this toroid. And so the sky, what, what people call the ceiling or what flat earthers are calling the dome, is not actually a dome any more than you would call this an, a dome. It's actually a torus. It looks like a dome. But over the North Pole, this would be the Aurora Borealis. And all of the inside of this layer of this electromagnetic field would be positive in charge, which Van Allen said, actually with the Van Allen Boyd's go, uh, belts going around the ball, he calculated and noticed that the inner belts are positive, the outer belts are negative or electrons. The inner belt is made of positrons and these would dive into the North Pole as a dipole, top and bottom gives you a dipole anode. So the reactor in the center of this torus is a positively charged, two-pointed dipole anode and we have aurora borealis on earth okay i'm just using the flat earth plane as an example you don't have to believe it now look at the uh let's see we have the field going across the plane now let's just say you took another donut or a torus and you turned it up standing up on its end rolling like a tire and put it right over the top of this one so that the center points completely matched like a ring soldered to a ring 90 degrees, but the center points match completely. Uh, that would give you your over unity field. Now that's how you create free energy. What it is, free energy is when you pump into something, let's say you pump 60 watts into something and you get 380 watts out. You're getting more energy wattage. Wattage is volts times amps, let's say. You're getting more total power out of the unit that you created because you put two toroids over it, over your field, or you created an over unity field. And there's, there's another channel 
that has flux that comes from the first channel that gets amplified and then there's what's called a flux that goes through a capacitor if you want and there is actually a flux capacitor like in back to the future there's some truth to that term for what they were trying to do go through time space now look at this drawing here this is a really neat drawing of that same thing we were going over this one but it's laying on its side let's say if you had the earth sideways and you were looking at that this right here would be the North Pole. This would be going up into the sky. There's the apexes that go around over the equator. Okay. This model would show you, like this one, how the apex of this ceiling would be over the equator. The inner area, which would have a little bit of a lower ceiling, would be the Tropic of Cancer, let's say. And the outer layer, where it starts to come down again on the other side of that apex, is let's say the Tropic of Capricorn. Again, I'm using a flat plane Earth model as a toroid field. As an example, you don't have to believe it, but this is how electromagnetic fields work, and so it's how I think. I learned all of this by programming human bodies to expand fields over nerve, nerve tissue when I worked in neuromodulation for chronic pain control. Here's a drawing of a toroid on a circuit board that's probably giving an alarm that's a capacitor that's probably giving an alarm from one of the major circuits on this board that's crucial to the running of that uh, machine that it's on, whatever it runs. So let's go back now to Ezekiel and the Bible. We know a little bit about electromagnetism. We know what a toroid looks like in a torus field, and we know what two of them stuck together look like. And here's, I made a crude drawing. I hope you can see me. Let's see myself. All right. Can you see that? This drawing I made, look at the top one first. Let's just say that is uh, an elliptical view of a flat, round surface. But the dotted portion is the electromagnetic field going around the toroid from top to bottom and around, creating that donut shape. This is just a simple, crude, two dimensional drawing. Now look where I drew a positive cathode at the bottom under the dipole in the middle. And then the outside is negative. So if you were to apply this to, let's say, the, the flat earthers model of the AE map, the ring, the ice ring, would be all negatively charged. And the plane would be flux traveling towards the ring from the over unity toroid, from the flux capacitation <laughs> toward the ring. I'm not kidding or making this up. It's funny how you can look at things later in life and they make sense all of a sudden. Now here's what I tried to draw. That's my best drawing freehand with the wet marker of a plane that has its toroidal field with a transverse plane that has its toroidal field. Now think of that as just a big ball of wax, okay? Two toroidal fields on top of each other spinning and creating over unity and that's where we get free energy that's where the earth gets its free energy in this model okay so if you just look at that you have to have two fields this is how you know this is you know like the saying as above as above so below when you figure this out and it applies to a circuit board or it can apply to a machine or it can apply to a human body in the nervous system using the spinal column as the dipole you know, you can apply it to Earth and use the North Pole and the Outer Edge. Even the ball Earth, you can, the way Van Allen drew the belts, it, it can work on a ball. But this is what it would look like. And this, what does it remind you of? It looks like the contraption that they built in the movie Contact for Jodie Foster to get dropped into when she went off into time space and met her father after going through that wormhole, remember? Now let's read Ezekiel and see if you understand it better. Just by opening your mind to a few concepts, watch this. It's like I read it and listened to it as a kid, and you go back now and go, wow, that makes sense. Should have been that shape. So first of all, look at this drawing. According to what it says in the scriptures, this artist has drawn this vehicle, and look at it. It's a two-toroid, bitoroid over unity energy system. It looks like the kind that if you put in 60 watts, you're going to get 380 out or 500. There's multiples of over unity. If you put in 60 and you got out 240, 
That's called four times over unity. By the way, over unity is breaking the second law of thermodynamics, which says if you put wattage or output energy into a box, you're not going to get the same amount out the other side. You can't produce more, at least not in the known world that we live in within this third density, okay, within our spectrum range of material in our atomic mass, unless you learn how to provide the other transverse field. Okay, this is actually a spaceship up in the clouds. But look at these little personal craft. Now, we're in the year 484 BC. Ezekiel, a priest, a captive in the land of the Chaldeans, Iraq, witnesses and describes quite well some flying vehicles that appear to him. For a man who has only seen ox carts for vehicles, he does his best to describe what he is seeing. Okay. A whirlwind came out of the north. A great cloud of fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, <clears throat> as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Taking the word amber back to the original Hebrew, we find that it means highly polished bronze or glowing bronze. Then he describes the vehicles as they move. And they went everyone straight forward whither the spirit was to go they went and they turned not when they went ezekiel is used to seeing an ox cart controlled and directed by using reins you know it's interesting to me when people see ufos in the sky and they do these zigzag patterns you never see one kind of curving do you it's always straight to one point and straight to another at least from your perspective view angle so these vehicles had no reins they went as as they chose and turned not as they went. <clears throat> so he sees a mother vehicle and four other vehicles flying in formation. He goes on further stating what they looked like. Wheels within wheels. See, that's that two toroid shape. And when they went, they went upon their four sides. And they turned not when they went. They went upon their four sides. Were they round? Wheels not standing upright, but laid down flat on their sides, which if it's moving, rolling, gyrating, turning, uh, which way is up? You know, once you build that and you're, it's an active dual torus, uh, I don't think it matters which way is up. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Okay, we've seen that. Have you seen pictures of the TR-3B or any vehicles, experimental models, or even in the movies, even if it's fake, what do they show? Uh, a Taurus cloud envelops a vehicle and a flash of light and it's gone. That seems to be how they work. And even the TR-3B, the one that's built in Pine Gap, Australia, that Stan Deo told us about, the triangular craft, it has a reactor in the middle that lights up and that ball of light just envelops the whole craft. And then it, there's a flash of light and it's gone, or, or you can see it whip away at, what is it, 2,200 miles an hour. Very, very fast vehicles. When these vehicles come to land upon the earth, Ezekiel writes, and their feet were straight, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. <clears throat> Good description of landing pads. The mother vehicle had on board what was the likeness of a throne and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of a man above upon it. And then he states, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about it, as the appearance of the bow that is in the, the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake, and he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak to thee. Again, look, folks, I'm telling you, that painting, I don't know whether the artist knows electronics and uh, electromagnetic theory and physics, like a little bit I do, but look what they're drawing. That is a ring within a ring. The center points match, and they would be creating electromagnetic fields that would look like donuts or a torus intersecting each other. 
So there's one, the horizontal one, that's probably the lower frequency. And the one that creates the original generation of power. And then you have your flux capacitation going into this transverse ring that's probably putting out a thousand X over unity. All right. Now, when you're a shepherd and you've only seen ox, <laughs> oxen and things like that, it is amazing how he described it. Ezekiel witnessed those vehicles move from mountaintop to mountaintop. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. When those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. He's describing retractable landing gear. For the spirit in the living creature was in the wheels. The spirit in the living creature was in the wheels. So that's probably his own description of saying that, you know, without knowing what actuators were and moving parts, that the craft looked alive. You know, if you see the the gear retract, that's the living creature in the wheels he saw. You know, instead of the fixed shell of the object, suddenly you see the wheels do something. You know, you see limbs moving. It's a living creature in the wheels. These vehicles appeared to Ezekiel on three different occasions. He goes on further to state, and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was the color of a terrible crystal stretched over the heads above. I think he's describing a cockpit. That's what did he say? The great description of the dome or cockpit. There you go. I have to read ahead. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. So it sounds like the rings in the outer circumference had eyes, so it would have been a light source or some kind of ring, maybe cathodal uh, pillars, portals, portals, people inside. In conclusion, God came down to visit and talk to Ezekiel in person with his throne on board his personal vehicle. And there were four other vehicles in formation escorting God's vehicle. Ezekiel witnesses the appearance of these vehicles on three different occasions. And God has a message to bring personally each time he visits with Ezekiel. Ezekiel does a great job for a man from 484 BC in describing what he witnessed. These are not UFOs as they are identified. Therefore, they are IFOs. I encourage everyone to read the book of Ezekiel and see what he says about his experiences concerning God's visitations. Wow. Wow. You know what just occurred to me, uh, has occurred to me before, but I'm going to tell you this. Uh, sorry for you, those of you who believe every single word of the Bible is true and forced that way by God. But what this actually tells me is that um, I know there's a creator God above the firmament, okay? And I know that he can see us all, all the time, anywhere on the plane, uh, because I've seen how he does it in an experience I had. If you have beings coming down to visit Ezekiel from the mountaintops and talk with him and they're flying personal craft, I don't believe they were the creator God, you know. Why would God need a personal flying vehicle? I don't believe he does. Uh, that's not how I got to where I went in my out-of-body experience. Uh, I didn't need a flying vehicle. In fact, I was a round ball at one point, and I had that energy. Wow, I never realized that either. It's funny how you have experiences in life, and as you get older, you learn things, and then you have to go back and reprogram your memory. <laughs> Suddenly you remember, like, I was in an over-unity toroid traveling, but it was me. Like a, My spirit was in an over-unity two-toroid traveling ball to get through to the firmament. All of this stuff just makes my mind explode with uh, memories, details, what I've learned, what could be, and what should not be. Like I just said, I don't believe that these beings that came down, these could have been Elohim that were ejected from God's presence for supporting Lucifer. You know, we know a lot of the things that were in the Old Testament where God required sacrificing and killing and slaying. Think about it, like when they offered sacrifices of the most perfect animals without blemish just think about this in another context with an open mind please okay don't don't go ah! 
if you wanted to offend the creator God and the one who created all of the genetics of the beings living on this planet, including ourselves, and you wanted to perform blood sacrifice rituals, you would pick the one that is the most beautiful and without blemish because you're taking the best of God's creation and what better way to offend him if you were, let's say, anti-God or anti-Christ in your organization. So what I'm actually getting from my newfound information about the Bible as well in the Old Testament where I don't believe that uh, in all cases or even most that the God of the Old Testament was the creator God, this confirms that... Uh, what do you call it? Hypothesis that I have. It seems to be reoccurring. So you have these Elohim beings that came down in these personal flying craft and visited Ezekiel. But so there you go, folks. It makes sense. It makes sense on a electromagnetic level when talking about toroids and over unity. And this is what I've talked about before. I have two or three videos where I talk about toroids over unity, uh, that the earth, those for those flat earthers that the ceiling cannot be a dome, it has to be a toroid. That's how electromagnetic fields work. And that's what contains our mass within our uh, atoms. You know, we have protons, electrons, and neutrons. And below that, you even have quarks and gluons. And, and even dark matter within that, they calculate, where something springs from nothing when energy shoots through it, probably in a transverse field in a smaller uh, over unity toroid by toroid system. But uh, think about it, folks. It's, it's very impressive. It's very fun to think about. And uh, I like...